Nowadays, everyone seems to be using AI for everyday tasks, but is it smart enough to write high quality code for you? In this video, I want to share my experience with you when it comes to using AI for coding and also show you how you can use Copilot with Visual Studio for free. What is GitHub Copilot? Well, it is an AI assistant developed by Microsoft and it comes built in in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code as well. They offer four tiers, the first one is free and it allows you to have up to 2000 code completions and 50 chat requests per month and then they have some other tiers, for example the Pro tier which costs $10 and it doesn't really have any other limitations. In Visual Studio Code, in the top bar, you should see icon of the Copilot. If you don't see it here, you can right click and enable the Copilot controls. Then you can simply click the icon. Then you need to sign in in GitHub. And then you will see the window Ask Copilot. And we also have another window called Edit with Copilot. And what can we do with Copilot? Well, we can ask it for any question we want, just like with any AI. So this is useful when you don't want to be jumping between internet and Visual Studio because now we have the AI integrated directly in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. But what is better is that it's also going to show us some suggestions. So I have added a simple function that's going to add us two numbers and now Copilot, based on the context that we have, so we have the script and this one function, it should be able to figure out that the other function I would want to add is subtract numbers, which you can see we have it here. It has those two parameters, the return statement, and everything works well. Then I can try another one, so let's do private integer, and let's do multiply. Well, I don't want to multiply them, so let's try divide numbers, and then again, Copilot has figured it out, so we can just hit tap and apply it. If you want to give more information to Copilot as for what kind of function you want to create, we can also use comments for that. So let's say that we want to calculate logarithm of a number and convert it to byte array, and then return, so as I do enter, we can see Copilot has figured it out. So if you want Copilot to give you relevant suggestions, it's really important that you give good names to the variables, good names to the functions, you may also provide some comments. Another feature we have is the inline chat, which you can also see if you click on the GitHub icon. We have the editor inline chat, for which we have the shortcut Control plus I. So if I don't want to be using comments to tell Copilot what I want to do, I can also press Control plus I. And then let's say tell it to create a function, just do enter, it's going to take it some time to think about it. It will give us the answer and we can either apply or discard. If we don't understand some part of the code, we can simply highlight it, press Ctrl plus I and tell Copilot to explain the code. So you can see it's really going to break it down, explain each line and explain everything what's happening in the part that highlighted. Copilot can obviously generate whole scripts on its own and it can also edit multiple scripts so let's now test where Copilot can actually write some longer code and write some high quality code, we'll see. This time we will be using the Copilot edits window which allows us to edit either just one script or multiple of them. For this feature to work, the working set you see here is important because it pretty much tells Copilot with which files it should work with. Even though we would like those two scripts work together, I will just try one then the other one and then I will let Copilot connect them together. So in the enemy AI, let's say that we want to create logic for enemy AI. It took it only a few seconds and we have already quite a lot of code generated, so let's accept it and read through it. So we can see it has created some kind of state enum, it is storing it as the current state. We also have some other variables, most of them have some default values, which generally is good. We have the start method, setting the state in the update, based on the current state, we are switching into one of these functions. So, so far it looks pretty good. One thing I would like to change about this is to make these variables CUIS field. So let's try to tell Copilot. By the way, if you don't want to be writing all of the messages to Copilot, you can also use the speech mode. I would like to be able to set values for most of the variables in the inspector. And now we can send it just as a usual message. And that's it. This time Copilot actually added the CUIS field attribute because what I see really often is that AI is just making all of the variables private, which obviously we don't need in context of Unity, but when you directly specify it, you want them to be configurable in the inspector and not public, it creates them as CUIS field. Overall, the code looks pretty good. Only the few things that I would maybe change about it is that I would move the current state variable so that it is with all of the private variables. I would probably add one space here, maybe give some default value to the defense timer, uh, another thing is that sometimes AI is using the private accessor for the functions, sometimes it is not. I generally like to keep it constant, so I would add it even here and to the update as well. 
but overall we can see that AI is able to write this quite simple code. So what I'm going to do is that from the enemy AI I will remove the move call to the function, I will remove the function itself, then I will tell Copilot to also add the movement functionality into the enemy mover. And we can see that Copilot already changed those two scripts, even though I didn't really want it to, but I told it that it should make the enemy move, so I guess it's quite expected. We try to accept this, let's see what kind of changes we have. So in the enemy mover we have the public function to move, we can pass in the speed, and in the enemy AI I guess we are just calling the move function. And what it seems to be doing is that it created another function in here, and from that it is calling the move function in the mover which probably is not the way that I would do it, but it certainly works. Otherwise, if you would want to manually provide some context that the copilot should work with, you can also simply add the files here, or you can just drag them in. So this way copilot knows with what files you want to work. I would also like to mention the memberships here on YouTube, so if you want to support me, gain access to some of the extra videos, gain access to each of the videos a bit sooner before they are out, and so on, feel free to check it out, it's going to help me a lot. Even though I use AI for coding quite often, I would not really suggest you to use it all the time, because quite often it can also provide false information. I would say that when you get to some of the harder programming problems, about 50% of the time AI is actually providing false information or the code just doesn't work for the first try, but this is expected as AI is still evolving. Even though AI may not be right 100% of the time, I still think it is a really valuable tool that you should at least know how to use and take advantage of it. So overall, when should you use AI? I think that it is safe to use AI for some kind of repetitive tasks, as for the multiply, the add function. So when you are creating multiple functions or variables that do pretty much the same thing, and you just want to make the process faster, you can definitely tell AI, and it's probably going to be able to do it. It is probably also safe to use AI for some well-known algorithms or some other code that is often used. In that case, AI is likely not going to make a mistake because it has seen maybe thousands of examples of that code. On the other hand, when I think that you should not be using AI, is that when you are trying to solve some problem about which you cannot even find information online, because if there is no information online, then AI cannot really take it from anywhere, and then usually it is just making stuff up and providing some false information because it is still trying to come up with some answer, and even when the AI doesn't have the information for it, the messages sound really confident, so you would say that yes, AI know what it is doing, but most of the time it can also provide false information. And you should probably also avoid using it when you are working on some more complex problems, because in that case AI often can think about code in context of Unity, and just in context of the whole project. So to sum it up, AI can be definitely helpful on some trivial or repetitive tasks, and it can even help you to access some information quickly, but you need to be careful about it and verify that the information is actually right. So I still prefer writing code on my own, because I can really decide how I'm going to make it look, and I don't have to rely on the AI, I also don't really like much talking with it, because I need to provide it all of the information, and I feel like when I'm really giving all the information to the AI about the code, it's pretty much the same as writing the code itself. And what is your opinion about using AI for coding? Perhaps you have created a whole app only using AI, or you hate using AI, you are never going to use it. In any case, just let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!